title of this presentation. Early in the morning is color, communism, and common sense. The actual visual, the PowerPoint, rules for righteous radicals. Those of you that heard Mr. Wallace's presentation a couple days ago understood that we are in a war. He gave, I think he used four satanic personalities that Satan has used in order to bring forth the destruction of our nation. Mr. Wallace did not know, I did not know where his presentation was going, and he did not know that I was going to build on what he shared with you guys a couple days ago. Because what we're dealing with in our nation is a spiritual war. I know we hear the term cultural war a lot, but actually it's much worse than a cultural war. We're dealing with a spiritual war between two kingdoms, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of Satan, or the kingdom of darkness. And these two, these two kingdoms have an agenda. The kingdom of God is to build us and prepare us for his eternal kingdom in heaven. The kingdom of darkness, or the kingdom of Satan, is to destroy this great nation, our country, and at the same time, take the inhabitants of our country, our citizens, to his eternal abode, which is the lake of fire. So this stuff is serious, it's, can it's cancer. It is literally spiritual cancer. It is a matter of life and eternal death. And we have to look at it that way, y'all. So the first thing I'm gonna do to you, do for you rather, is to read for you what the Word of God says, because this is a war. It's a war that is invisible on one hand and visible on the other. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into thought, every thought, into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is being fulfilled. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our spiritual eyes to see the invisible. We know, Lord, that if we can see the invisible, then, Lord, we can deal with the visible. We know, Lord, that the enemy of, of our souls, Satan, has blinded, not the eyes, but blinded the minds of those who believe not the gospel. So help us, Father, in this last day of teachings to be able to see what others cannot see, not only for ourselves, but so that we may be able to warn others that they want to be in the eternal kingdom of God and not in the eternal kingdom of the enemy. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, the title, as you know, is Color Communism and Common Sense. A few months ago, I was with Mr. Sherliff at his house. He took me up in his office, and this book was kind of sticking out of a box and my eyes went right to it. I, I, I didn't know anything about this guy, Manning Johnson. But I, I looked at the title, and I said, Color, Communism, and Common Sense. I said, Mr. Sherliff, let me see that book. And I looked at it, and I said, Manning Johnson, who is this guy? And there's a picture of him here. Manning Johnson, he's dead and gone now, but he was a black American who came up under the Jim Crow era, like myself. He had a lot of hatred, a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness in his heart and in his mind because of the racism that was permeated at that time. And now what we see, the same spirit of racism that has gone with whites oppressing blacks, now you got blacks oppressing whites. So there's nothing new under the sun. We just change big players in the same game where Satan, as the Apostle Paul says, we're not fighting against people. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And the war that we have is a spiritual war, and we have to understand that. 
because our weapons are not guns, our weapons are not cannons, our weapons are not AR-15s or whatever. Our weapons have to be prayer, fasting, the word of God. We have to understand what we're dealing with here because if we have a spiritual war, we have to fight a spiritual war with spiritual weapons. So, Manning Johnson grew up in the church. Manning Johnson understood the gospel of Jesus Christ, yet Manning Johnson had a, an issue. His issue was he had a lot of hatred, a lot of racism, a lot of prejudice in his heart. I told somebody this morning, we have to deal with this color problem, this race problem. People don't want to talk about it. They want to act like, well, it's too big to deal with. Yeah. No, you have false guilt on one hand and you have revenge and hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness on the other. But the race issue has to be dealt with. You know why? Because it's the historical issue. It's the issue that has divided America. And like we all know, as soon as somebody says something that we don't, that they, that they don't like, the first word out their mouth is the R word. Oh, you're a racist. And they don't even know what the definition of a racist is. The definition of a racist is very simple. Anyone, black, white, yellow, brown, or polka dot, that thinks they're better than somebody else based on something as superficial as the color of their skin is a racist. End of discussion. You're not a racist because you disagree with satanic ideology. You're a racist because you think you're better, or I think I'm better. Blacks think they're better than whites now. Back in the day, whites thought they were better than blacks. That's what racism is. Anything other than that is not racism. Hello, somebody. Anyhow, this guy, this guy, Manning Johnson, he had a Christian foundation, but he also had a problem. He had an issue. He had an issue with Caucasians. So what did he do? He started listening to Marxist and communist ideology. And they told him, oh, the communists, we're for the poor people. We heard Mr. I, somebody say, yeah, I think it was Mr. Wallace, anytime that dictators wanted to get over on you, they'd always tell you they were for the little guy. They were for the poor. And that's how they suck the people in with this nonsense. And then it goes from there to political correctness and on and on and on. So Manning Johnson then started listen to, listening to preachers who weren't true ministers of the gospel. He started listening to preachers who were communist preachers. And they then took him into the communist party and he rose so high in the communist party that he actually went to the Kremlin to get trained. Then he came back to America and started seeing this stuff and then he discovered that the communists didn't care anything about black people. The communists didn't care anything about poor people. The communists only cared about one thing, communism. So what did he do? He repented. He said, Lord, forgive me. I was wrong. The problem wasn't with Caucasians. The problem was with my evil heart and my evil mind. And he repented and he wrote this book and he started setting out the lies that the communists have, have was telling him and that still goes on today. So what I did, Mr. Shurtleff had me write the forward to this book. Obviously I'm not gonna go through the whole book, but I just wanna kinda give you, I think there's a few of these books over there. You can use your coupons. I don't know how many there are over there, but whatever's over there, you can pick up one. I'm just gonna read to you uh, what I put in the uh, forward. <clears throat> In a booklet entitled Co Color, Communism, and Common Sense, written by Manning Johnson, a former black communist who became an American patriot, we now have a serious need for a time of truth. For this reason, we here at Camp Constitution have taken on the responsibility to reprint this material, which was originally published in 1958. Despite the presidential post-election victory of President Donald J. Trump, America finds herself hopelessly divided based on cultural, spiritual, and political issues along racial, religious, and ethnic lines. For example, in the political realm, many Trump supporters believe Hillary Clinton should be sent to prison, while Clinton supporters believe Trump supporters are a basket of deplorables holding views of racism, sexism, homophobia, and bigotry. However, a time of truth rec requires that we, who are American patriots, regardless of race, religion, or ethnicity, recognize the communist plot to destroy our constitutional republic through the tactics of divide and conquer. Then he says, then I said rather, for example, with the issue of racial conflict, communist propaganda places the blame for all the problems in black America at the door of so-called white privilege. This false belief causes the black community to feel sorry for itself 
blame others for their failures, ignore countless opportunities that are available to all, hold bitterness and jealousy of the success of other racial and cultural groups, groups and look for easy solutions as a substitute for reality. But as an American conservative patriot, patriotic minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who happens to be black by God's design, I have dedicated my life to speaking truth to the lies of communist propaganda. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5, which I just read, I'll read it again. For though we live in human bodies, we are not carrying out our spiritual warfare according to human reasoning by using human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons, but they are mighty spiritual weapons of God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Therefore, we refute arguments, in this case communism, and every proud thing that sets itself up against God, and we bring every thought and purpose into the obedience of Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our vision at Camp Constitution. Hear that? All right, so some of the things that you heard Mr. Wallace say, you're going to see in essence here. Rules for Righteous Radicals by Saul Olinsky. Okay, let's see. Okay, can you all see? Can you all see the, the, the slides? Okay, cool. Impact of liberalism on the culture. This rascal here, you heard Mr. O. Wallace talk about him. He was the one of the major community organizers in the Windy City in Chicago in the 30s. Even though he's dead and gone and in hell somewhere, his work has still premiated and the Marxists use it. Impact of liberalism on the culture. Organizing for power man, by manipulating the poor as, a, as community organizers through Marxist, socialist, and atheist uh, 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 ideas. Now, look what, uh, what, what Alinsky said in his book. If you pick up this book, Rules for Radicals, you'll see it right there on the cover of the book. He says, unless we forget at least an over-the-shoulder acknowledgement, to the, ver the very first radical from all of our legends, mythology, and history, and who is to know where mythology leaves off and history begins, or which is which. The very first radical known to man who rebelled against the establishment and did it so effectively that he at least won his own kingdom was Lucifer. Mm -hmm. That's in the man's book. Yeah. Community organizer, the president, the last one, who was a community organizer, the one who lost the 2016 election, the woman, both of them studied under this man. We got a problem, y'all. Organizing for power. Let me tell you how this community organizing thing works and why we have to deal with this race nonsense. We can't keep putting that off saying, oh, we can't talk about that. That's too personal. That's too sensitive. All people get offended. That is our Achilles heel. That's where the clay comes in or the on and our feet. Because the devil knows if you can't get him no other way, just play the race card. And it works every time. What did Olinsky teach the, the Marxists? He said, you agitate, then you aggravate. Then you educate, and then you organize. The Alinsky rule. There are only three kinds of people in the world, according to him. He's a liar, but this is what he says. He says, the rich and powerful oppressors. Then he says, the poor and disenfranchised oppress. <laughs> and then he says, and the middle class. He throws that in the middle. Why do you think the middle class is being uh, 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 broken down? He says, whose apathy perpetuates the status quo. You got to get rid of the middle class. You want the rich cats, they the oppressors. So you got to make sure you take from them. And then you got them poor, pathetic, sorry, masses of the oppressed. Every old communist ideology always puts people as either oppressed or oppressor. That means the white bum in the street under a bridge is the oppressor, and Oprah Winfrey is oppressed. 
kind of nonsense is that? The revolutionary goal is to mobilize the poor and oppressed as a battering ram to do what? Bring down the system. What's a battering ram used for? Boom! To kick in something. I have friends that have worked vice squad and narcotic squad. When they're getting ready to take off a drug, uh, a drug dealer, they use a battering ram to get into the crib. First thing you do is you agitate. All these riots and protests, you go up to these protesters, they got masks on their face. Why are they hiding their face? What they got to hide if they right? Huh? In the 60s, when I was coming up with a civil rights uh, 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 movement, and when the marchers marched, they didn't hide their face. What they hiding their face for? And then when you ask them what they're protesting about, they don't know. They're getting paid for that nonsense. They're agitating. Every time you read the paper about these riots, that's part of the Olinsky community order. You agitate. You keep mess going. Then you aggravate. Riot here. Riot there. Burn this down. Burn that down. Do this. Agitate. Aggravate. Then what do you do? Then you educate them in Marxist ideology. You let them know. You keep mess going. You're getting the people mad. You let them stand up. Them old rich people over there, they got the money. Honey, you need to get the money. Burn it down, baby. Then you organize them. That's what this whole nonsense of community organizing is about. And you see what the revolutionary goal is. To use the poor and oppressed as a battering ram. The 1% elite, the big money boys, whether they're black, white, green, or polka dot, they have the money, but they don't have the numbers. The ones that have the numbers is the masses, the proletarian, as it's called, versus the bourgeois. And who's the problem? That middle class. So you, what you got to do, you got to eliminate the middle. And you see that happening every day. How do you organize for power? Look at this. Politics, listen y'all, is all about power relations. But to advance one's power, one must couch one's position in the language of morality. In other words, we're for the little guy. You gotta make your cause seem right. Mr. Wallace gave you the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 18 where it says, the man who speaks first his call seems right. The key word there, y'all, is seems. His call seems right until somebody else comes behind him and examines him. Reverend Kraft ain't a doctor, but I'll examine you. Eh? That's the reason why I, I travel. That's the reason why I come to Camp Constitution every year. That's the reason why I'm believing God for that RV, so that I can go and say, hey, we need to get a uh, Camp Constitution here. We need to get a Massachusetts uh, uh, a Family Institute here. We need to bring back American principles here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Come behind the liars and examine them. Next one. Change is brought about through relentless, 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 in other words, that don't lighten up, agitation and troublemaking of a kind that radically disrupts society as it is. Do you all see a pattern here? Eh? Do you see what's happening in America? The left understands you got to keep mess going. When Obama said eight years in 2008, Change is on his way. He kept that promise. He sure enough told the truth. I told some youngsters yesterday, they saw a little book over there about the, the sands of Obama and the, wisdom, the collective wisdom of Obama. And they opened it up and all the pages was blank. I said, yeah, you clap, but let me tell you something. I told him, I says, that's wrong. I said, you know why it's wrong? Because number one, that man came out of thin air, nobody never heard of him before 2004, and in eight years he did more damage to this country playing the race card 
And he had a whole lot of wisdom, but it was evil wisdom. I said, what you need to do is take that book, and instead of saying he didn't do anything, no, you need to put all the evil wisdom that he did in that book so that you can examine what he did. Them black pages might be a good joke, but guess what? It ain't real. It ain't real. What's real is, who do we know that went from being anonymous to being the president of the United States overnight. Don't come telling me that he's incompetent. No, he wasn't incompetent. He is wicked. Okay? You don't get to come out the hood in Chicago to being the president of the United States because you're stupid. Hello, somebody. So I told them, young people, I said, no, take that book. But don't leave them pages blank. Because you're not insulting him. You're insulting your own self. Write everything he's done wicked in the book. Then the book, The Collective Wisdom of Barack Obama, will have some teeth and some meat behind it. Is Reverend Kraft right about it? Yes. The next one. There can be no conversation between the community organizer and his opponents. Guess who his opponents are? Us. The latter, us, the opponents, must be depicted as being evil. How many times you heard that one? Oh, you evil, right wing, white, racist, conservatives. I'm not a racist and I'm sure not white. <laughs> but I love God. So they really have a problem with me. Because they don't, so they call me Uncle Tom. And they don't even know who Uncle Tom was. Uncle Tom was a black minister during the civil or uh, during the uh, 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 slavery era who loved God so much that he took a beating unto death by other black sellouts in order to keep them slaves that he hid from getting, being caught by that wicked slave master, Simon Legree. But they took that good man's reputation and twisted it into some kind of nonsense. The organizer must never focus, look at this one, on one single issue. The organizer must move inexhaustibly from one issue to the next. That's how you keep people off guard. You don't just say, okay, in, in one year we're just gonna deal with Agenda 21. Next year we're just gonna deal with gender identity. Next year we're gonna just deal with, with, with abortion. Next year we're gonna just deal with homosexuality. No, uh-uh. You keep hitting them from all sides, bam. Homosexuality on Monday. Bam! Gender identity on Tuesday. Bam! Oh, gender 21 on Wednesday. Bam! Article 5 on Thursday. Bam! Something else on Saturday. Transgenderism on Saturday. Bam! Something else on Sunday. Bam! Something else on Monday. Bam! You never have a time to regroup. That's one thing you got to hand to the Marxists. They slick. They know how to think up evil. And guess what? They don't even realize they're doing what Jesus said. Jesus said the children of the darkness are wiser than the children of the light. You know what he meant by that? That wasn't a compliment. He was saying they know how to scheme. They know how to plot. What's wrong with us? We sit back, act always on the defensive. Talking about, oh, they're doing this. Oh, they're doing that. Oh, they're taking our kids. Oh, they're bringing up men with high heels in the school. Oh, what are we going to do? Instead of saying, devil, don't tread on me. Stop. We ain't doing it. The Lord says that if you don't give us your kids, we're going to lock you up. Baby, have at it. Click, click. Let's go. <laughs> I saw that in the civil rights movement. And folks said, you can't sit at this orange counter, you're black. Really? Guess what? I'm going to sit down. You're going to jail. Good, let's go. <laughs> we saw that in the American Revolution. The colonists said, oh, Lord, we sick of you, man. We out of here. And they had to die, a lot of them. We saw that in the Bible. They told, don't you preach in Jesus' name no more. Peter and John said, hey, man, you do whatever you got to do. We know what we know. We saw it in the Old Testament. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar, that wicked ruler said, shh, shh. when the music plays, you bow down and worship the idol I set up. 
Everybody else compromised and sat down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Baby, our God, the true and living God, is able to deliver us Nebi out of your hand. But even if he don't, we ain't bowing. Baby, make your play. That's why I got to go to promote the camp every year. Because of anything we need, we need some guts up in here. All this scare, I'm scared. Scared of what? Finally, taught one's opponents to the point that they label you a dangerous enemy of the establishment. Every one of these points, Alinsky teaches his people, the Marxists, and it works every time, and you see it. I could stop right here. That just them two slides lets you know the game plan. And all, all we want to do is put up legislation and go to Washington and, 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 and get and talk and talk about what the left, what the Marxists are doing. Man, get up and fight and back them knuckleheads up. <laughs> Manipulating the poor. The poor and the oppressed are being used as a battering ram. That by taking legitimate grievances and using them to make unreasonable demands. That's what they do. They take legitimate grievances and then twist them and spin them to get the masses of poor people because being poor doesn't mean you're oppressed. Reverend Craft doesn't have a lot of money, but I'm sure not op oppressed because my God, Jesus Christ, told me if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And then you will know the truth, Stevie Craft, and the truth will make you free. Preachers misquote that and say, set you free. No, it doesn't say that. It says, make you free. What's the difference between being set free and being made free? When you set something, I can take this book, for example, set it there, then a couple days later decide, I don't like it there. I'm going to unset it, take it from here, uns and set it over there. Otherwise, you can move it. But when you make something, you can't unmake it. That's the difference. Why is this happening? Rules and radicals. Democracy means getting those who are in out. We don't have a democracy. We have a constitutional republic. But most people in America, if you ask them what kind of government structure we have, they'll tell you uh, uh, 50 plus one, um, uh, um, uh, um, the democracy. But in a communist Marxist mindset, the poor people have the numbers. And they overrun the system by using them as battering rams. That's why those of you guys and gals that play chess, you look on a chessboard, what do you see? The symbol that has the most pieces are the pawns, right? But the pawns are also the symbol on the board that has the least amount of power. Hello, somebody. Those that are in the 1%, their goal is to mobilize the poor and the oppressed as the battering ram to bring down the system. Therefore, you want to organize for power. That's your community organizer. So when I hear people talking about, oh, oh he, oh, Obama was, was a community organizer. Yeah. So how, what that make us look like in America? That we were so ignorant of, it, of what the devil used him for that a community organizer from the Windy City became the president of the United States. Not for four years, but eight years. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame, double shame on me. So we laughed. He was only a community organizer. Right. And he jumped from that to the state senate, and from that to the United States Senate, and from that to the White House. And he was only a community organizer. See, we get it twisted. We think we know something. We don't know squat diddly unless the Lord shows us. When he said, I'm going to change America, I dare anybody say he didn't do it. 
you gonna put up they put up a book with all blank pages? I beg the differ. Uh oh, now we gonna get we gonna get really nasty. You young people don't know anything about the tar baby. Some of you old folks might know about the tar baby. We gonna talk about the tar baby. Here's a story. You young people wasn't born. But Rem Crab gonna tell you about the tar baby. In one tale, Br'er Fox, he represented the devil's bunch, constructs a doll out of a lump of tar, dresses it with some clothes. When Br'er Rabbit, that's the uninformed masses, comes along, Br'er Rabbit addresses the tar baby, but receives no response. Br'er Rabbit gets offended by what he perceives as the Tar Baby's lack of manners. So Bear Rabbit punches the Tar Baby. Bam! And in so doing, he gets his left hand stuck. He says, I spoke to you and you didn't respond? Bam! Now he's stuck in the Tar. Then he says, the more Bear Rabbit punches at the Tar Baby for his offense, the more he gets stuck. It says he punches and kicks the tar baby out of rage and the worse, the more he kicks at the baby, the more stuck he gets. So he says, you gonna talk to me? Bam! Oh. Bam! Then he tries to kick. Bam! Bam! Now he, then he tries to headbutt. He's jammed up tight. Now that the rabbit is stuck, here comes the fox. Ha ha ha. Ah, you're trapped. Ha, ah, you can't fight anymore. Ah, ponders how to dispose of the rabbit. The helpless but cunning rabbit pleads. Oh, Mr. Fox, do anything you want to me. You can roast me, Mr. Fox. You can hang me, Mr. Fox. You can skin me, Mr. Fox, or you can drown me, Mr. Fox. But please, Mr. Fox, don't fling me in that briar patch. Prompting the sadistic fox to do exactly that because the fox gullibly believes that, will, that it will inflict maximum pain on the rabbit. But they, the fox didn't know that rabbits are at home in thickets and the rabbit escapes from the fox. Eh? We're at, those of us that love God and love America, we're at home in our nation because we know how our nation was founded. We're on the right side of this equation. But the fox wants to make us think we're on the wrong side. So the fox creates a trap called the Tar Baby. And the biggest Tar Baby that the fox uses is the race card. And the more we engage the race card by trying to prove that we're not racist, the more stuck we get. Oh, you don't agree with a man wearing high heels? You're a racist. Oh, you don't agree in homosexual rights? You're a racist. Oh, you don't agree in transgenderism and women can kill their babies? Oh, you're a racist. What does being a racist got to do with any of that? What's a racist got to do with some man coming in school with a dress on? The rabbit said, the, the fox is dead. But then, the rabbit heard a scuffling away out the other side of the patch. And lo and behold, who does the fox see scrambling out but the rabbit himself playing a briar, briar bush whistle. And the rabbit said, I was born and bred in the briar patch. That's me. Maybe we need to sing that song at the campfire tonight. <laughs> Put that in the book for next year, Mr. Sheridan. About the rabbit, the tar baby, the fox, and the briar patch. I think I'll co contribute that next year. Born and bred in the briar patch. That's me, last breath.
Briar Rabbit. I told you, Fox, not to throw me in there. And in all the world, that's the place that I love the best. And with a lickety click and a lickety clop, he hopped away. In modern usage, the tar baby is any sticky situation, cause tar sticky. That by trying to uh, involve yourself with it, you only get more aggravated and stuck. Racism is the ultimate tar baby. Symbolism of the tar baby story. The fox represents the Marxist leftist satanic force of this government and the people who subscribe to this wickedness. The rabbit represents the, uh, the ignorant individual masses of people who go along with this nonsense. The tar baby is the trap. The trap of all kind of entitlement. It blew my mind during the 2016 uh, 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 primaries. I said, how in God's name Young people today in this generation don't want to hear a thing from us old folks, and yet they're voting for this old cooser named Bernie Sanders, who has one foot in the graveyard and the other foot on a banana peel. <laughs> oh, I feel the burn. I feel the burn. Yeah, you better feel Reverend Kraft. And the patch is freedom. But you all know, patches have thorns. And patches hurt. But it's gonna take some pain to get to turn our nation right side up. We got to be willing to get stuck. We got to be willing to bleed a little bit. We got to be willing to sacrifice. Them devils ain't gonna turn America back over to us. They're in control. But God says our, our battle is not fighting with flesh and blood enemies. Politics and not gonna fix this thing. You forget all this right-wing politic nonsense. They ain't gonna fix this mess. You can't fix a spiritual problem with political solutions. I don't care who you put in office. It ain't gonna work. John Adams told us that. He says we have the best constitution, but guess what? You got wicked people running right the country. You might as well try to hold a whale with the constitution. He said. Our nation is only for a virtuous people. Now here's the solution. Solution spiritual. I read it to you. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue, that's the key word, in my word. Then, it's the if-then proposition, y'all. Are you my disciples indeed? And then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make make not set make you free john chapter 8 verse 31 and 32. there's your answer that's your weapon truth tell the truth without hesitation or apology i've been telling you especially young people i've been telling all, all week stop going along with the okie doke be willing to stand alone if you have to that shows you got guts when you go off this mountain and go back down in the valley, and them other folks, your friends want to tell you some nonsense? For example, the big one, the homosexual, gay rights nonsense. Ask them, when do I have a right, a constitutional right, to, to practice sodomy? Show me that in the Constitution, then take out your Constitution. I'm straight. I'm, I'm heterosexual. I don't need to take my wife and have a month set out for straight Pride Month and march down the street to talk about what I do with my wife in the bed. Get out of my face with that nonsense. Truth is our most powerful weapon and strategy. Truth is objective, it's verifiable, and it's self-evident to a clear-thinking mind that is grounded in rationality and knowledge of the facts. Rationality proceeds from recognition and respect for the created order and the creator himself. His immutable, in other words, unchanging laws, provide the fixed standards by which any material or spiritual thing can be measured, 
proven and trusted. We learned that from Dr. Soon. That's true science. Without fixed standards, there can be no steadfast rule of law making all men equal and free, only arbitrary rule by those with power to enforce their will. That's what we see happening in America. Oh, I feel. And since I have the money and the power, you're going to go along with it, and I'm going to use the courts to make you go along with it. No, you got to have a fixed standard. I saw someone the other day yesterday, it was so ridiculous, about some woman, just had a baby in Canada, baby's two days old, and she talking about, I'm going, don't put nothing on the birth certificate about male or female. I'll let the child decide what they are. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> Keep it simple, but not stupid. The enemy relies on confusion to create chaos and then exploits the chaos to take control. Satan weaves a complex fabric of falsehoods, half-truths, misrepresentations, misdirection, hidden false assumptions, and sophistry designed to mislead the gullible into drawing false conclusions. Honest uh, uh, complexity fa favors deceivers. Honest and intelligent simplification, simplification frees captive minds. People think they're intelligent because they can make something complex. <laughs> Complexity brings confusion most of the time. If you can't explain something with common sense terms that everybody can understand for the most part, you're believing a lie. Think for yourself. Exercise the right to think for yourself. Human beings are susceptible for jumping on bandwagons or joining teams to meet social needs. That's what this group think is about. But this makes us vulnerable to manipulation by people who form or control teams to serve their own agenda. Example, the Republicans and Democrats. Beware of any group, any system, or any institution that requires or expects you to substitute their conclusions for your own or to adopt a team position on a whole slate of issues and shuns or denigrates you for disagreeing on more or one or more items. For an example, most liberals recognize an essential natural order in the ecosystems of living things, but at the same time, they are forbidden from the acknowledging the natural family as humanity's ecosystem because gay rights is a must embrace leftist goal. Challenge to know it all. I'm almost done. The elites on both sides, Republican elites, Democrat elites. There's no two political parties with two complete opposite agendas. You got one party, half the head is donkey, the other half is, is elephant. That's why nothing changes. The elites on both sides invariably assume an attitude of moral and intellectual superiority. Superiority. It's easy to expose their errors by practicing the Socratic method of interrogation. And here it is. When they start telling you nonsense, ask them first, what do you mean by that? Since this homosexual thing is a big one, when they come up to you, when you see them, and they tell you about gay rights, ask them one question. What do you mean by gay rights? What do you mean by that? And make them answer you. And the moment they say, I have the right to practice homosexuality, you say, well, guess what? And I have the right to disagree with it because the Bible says it's wicked. So, we're at an impasse. <laughs> Ask them, what do you mean by that? And the second question, how do you know that what you believe is true? In other words, what is your source of authority? And when they say, well, I feel, and then you can say, and I feel just the opposite. But I have a source of authority. It's called the Bible, yeah. the Word of God, the Scriptures, Turkey. <laughs> you don't have to be an expert on any given topic to be able to take command of a discussion and expose liberal Ill illogic and its lack of sound presuppositions. Avoid guitar, baby. Remember. You cannot persuade a true believer who is a leftist, a Marxist, you can't persuade them with facts and logic. It won't work. Intellectually, most of them are embrace a closed loop cultural Marxist narrative that is similar to paranoid schizophrenia. And if you run up on somebody, which you all do, 
and they proved themselves to be incapable, incapable of recognizing self-evident truths. That's why the Declaration says these truths are self-evident. Such as denying the humanity of an unborn baby while looking at the same time at an advanced stage ultrasound image. What are you supposed to do? Disengage immediately. Conservative populists should largely ignore the left and their delusions and just focus on taking the seats of power away from them. That's our job, not trying to convince them. When Sister Ashley goes to, to get her exams, her prenatals, and the doctor, the OBGYN, puts the, the ultrasound thing on her and they see the baby, she said, when I was speaking, the baby was bleeping in her womb the other day. They see that baby, and they go talk about it. That ain't a real baby. Don't you believe your lying eyes? That's just some tissue moving up in there. That don't even sound right. Here's the last slide. Be an army of one. Paradoxically, populism is a movement of individualists whose common denominator is the Constitution, unlike our cultural opponents who hold the hive mentality of big government status, our true strength isn't in our numbers, but our true strength is in the righteousness of our cause. Here's the measure, the takeaway. The patriots shall prevail in the end. Hello, somebody. I think we have that two minutes. Do we have? Okay, I'll take one question, but no snarky questions. It's got to be a deep question. Yes, sir. Okay, I was wondering. Stand up. You're the only one that has time. Come so, on. So what's the actual goal of communists? If they're poor, they're trying to make everyone else poor? Or what? No, the, the goal of communists is to break down the capitalist system so that the elite, the one world government is their final goal. That's their goal. They want 1% and they think they are that 1% to control everything. That's what they want. And they use the masses, the poor, the rabbits, to fulfill that by tearing down the system that exists now, which is the free market system. If you ever think, read communist literature, they always tell you, who's the enemy? They tell you, capitalists. Okay? Good question, son. All right. All right, let's give Go. a nice warm hand.